Hey guys, today we have a 2008 Chevy Impala. It's got a coolant leak, the water pump to be specific. It's got the 3500 V6 and uh, we're going to throw a water pump in it. So if you get, a, you get any car that's got a coolant leak and you're trying to figure out where the coolant leak's coming from, if you see this line, this dark line right here on the underside of the hood, that's wet. That's coolant, and that's being slung from the serpentine belt. So whenever you see that right there, it's a pretty good indicator that the leak is going to be real close to the belt because the belt is slinging the coolant up on the uh, underside of the hood. So if we look down in here, we can see it's wet. We can see the uh, front of the radiator is wet. Pretty much everything lined up with that belt. Let me move my light. Let me try to zoom in here. And that far, that far pulley down there is our water pump pulley. And if you look real close, you can see that the outside of the pulley is wet. The uh, the, the bearing, the the seal's gone bad, and it's leaking coolant. And when the engine runs, it's slinging the coolant everywhere. So let's get started. Okay, we're looking down through the top here the back side of the radiator and right there you see the plastic petcock valve, the drain valve for the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that valve loose and put a catch pan under the car and we're going to drain the coolant system. So the serpentine tensioner is a spring-loaded tensioner and it's got a little square hole in it and if you don't have a tensioner tool, I do have one, but you can use a regular 3 8 dry ratchet. This is the size of the uh, square hole in the tensioner. You rotate it, let's see here, you rotate this one clockwise to take the belt off. Okay, with the battery and everything out of the way, uh, we can get a better view at the uh, water pump here, right there. Now, something I noticed looking at it, the one bolt over here is bright, shiny, the other two are dark, and their fourth bolt, there's four total, is missing. So, I'm not sure what's up with that, maybe this was done before and they weren't tightened down, I don't know. We're going to get this bracket out of the way. Let's see if we can move 
move this line. With that line out of the way, we're going to pull these bolts out. What I usually do is take a screwdriver and stick a screwdriver in there to hold it while I break them loose. Those are 10 millimeter. Oh, wow, that's loose. That bolt was loose. wasn't even tight. No wonder that other bolt is missing. I wonder if they're all loose. Yep, yeah, that was loose. They should be way tighter than that. So that one's not even tight at all. Those should have been a little bit of a struggle to get off there. They should have at least been tightened down. Those weren't even tight. There's our pulley. You can see the inside of it. See all the coolant running down in there? Okay. We can see the we can see our water pump now. There should be Five bolts, I think. Three along the top, two along the bottom. I'm not sure what size those are. Those are 13s. Okay, there's the last bolt. Five bolts. Yeah, I'm double check here. The last of the last of the bolts? Or close to the last of the bolts? Because I'm seeing like a bolt here. Stick a pry bar here. down in here and see if we can pop this thing out of there. There it is. A lot of coolant. Sorry. A lot of coolant sitting on top there. I'm not sure if that's coming out the weep hole or I would have meant. Yep, it is. It is. I just tipped it and a whole bunch of coolant just ran out. So that was nice. Now we know. We know we're on the right track here and we see the coolant running out of there.
going to pull this pulley off. I can't see all the uh, gasket mating surface here. It's frustrating that somebody put a cheap aftermarket pump on that used a paper gasket. Uh, the pump I bought is a new pump. I bought it from Napa and it actually comes with a uh, aluminum gasket embossed with a, an O-ring. And had this had the original pump or you know a good aftermarket one, we wouldn't have to do this step. We'd just wipe that down with a rag. But somebody used a, a cheap pump, which is probably why it failed, or maybe because they left those bolts out, and they uh, they put some sort of a sealant on that gasket that's making me have to scrape it off with a razor blade. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this off just so I can get a better view at it. That's 15 millimeter if anybody's wondering. See what I'm doing. This is that gasket I was talking about. I'm going to pull the plastic here. So the new gasket is aluminum with a uh, with a rubber O-ring embossed right into the aluminum. all the uh, bolts on the wire wheel off camera. So I put one of the old bolts back in just to see how far the threads come through and you can imagine uh, once the um, once the pulley is on here sandwiched between the bolt and the flange is pretty much flush. I wasn't able to find a bolt exactly that size but I did find one with the same uh, thread pitch in my toolbox. It's uh, Sunday evening so I can't run up to the store, the parts store and get the right bolt. So what I'm going to do is uh, with that bolt right there, I'm just going to cut the rest of it off, and when I back it out, it should kind of clean those threads up a little bit. See, we cut that part off. It's probably warm. Now the head of it is a different size, but we now have the right bolt for that missing bolt for the water pump pulley. 
I'm going to go clean that up on the wire wheel and we'll go put the pulley on the new pump on the car. Okay, with our new bolt made, let's go ahead and reinstall the uh, pulley. I'm going to put one of the one of the old bolts in first just to get everything lined up. Look at that, huh? And unlike the last mechanic that worked on this, we're going to tighten these bolts down. We're not even going to charge extra for it. So if I wedge this screwdriver between these two bolts right here, then I can tighten up this bolt here, and it'll hold it. Then we're going to rotate it 180 degrees and do the same thing. Then we'll rotate it 90 degrees and do it again. cable. Okay, now the last bolt isn't a 10 millimeter head, it's a 12. Only because I couldn't find a 10 head. If I could, I would have cut down a 10 head so they matched. All right. We'll spin it to make sure we're golden. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna replace this upper radiator hose before I put the pulley and stuff back on. It might help me give me a little access in here. And then we'll go ahead and put everything back together. That's a crappy aftermarket hose. Maybe if I cut a little bit of length off, maybe that's our problem. Well, that's better. Still not perfect, but it's better. I cut a, about a half inch off each end. I guess they're a cut to fit hose. All right, we're all we're in the home stretch now. I'm going to put this pulley back on and we'll put the belt back on. I hope if I put it in the right hole.
Okay, I'm going to move you guys out of the way so I can put the belt on, the battery on. We'll fill it with coolant. We'll put the reservoir back in. Fire it up. I think I got it right. We just want to look and make sure that our belt is on properly. We're looking good. Well, I put the battery in backwards. The same with this uh, coolant reservoir. It's got this right here and it slides right down onto a little puck down there that fits right up in here. And then these two drop down over these studs.
Okay, so the coolant system's all put back together, and all we have to do is fill the system with coolant. A lot of these um, modern vehicles, you can't just pour coolant in because you'll end up with air pockets throughout. Um, this one you kind of can. This is about the highest spot on here. You could probably get away with it. You'll still have to run it through some heat cycles, though, to work the air out. Um, some of the other cars, some of the other engines have bleeder screws, whatever. This is how I do it. This is an airlift. This is a tool I bought off a Mac tool truck, oh gosh, probably 18 years ago. And it's great. Let me show you what's in here. Um, this, it comes with a couple of hoses here. I'll show you what they do. And it's got some, uh, it's got a cone. It's got some different size bushings for different size coolant necks. Um, it's got some little plugs. The, a lot of these uh, little plugs are for um, where the hose goes in, to, uh, the overflow hose goes into your coolant neck. But what I do, how I use this, is I stick this thing all the way down in beyond that. And uh, I'll show you how it works here. It's pretty slick. You stick that down in there, and then you tighten this. And what it does is it swells that rubber up and makes a real tight seal. Okay? Get this out of here. And then... Uh, this is our fill hose. We don't need that one yet. And then we take this hose right here, clips right into here, and then we take the other end and we stick it in the uh, coolant reservoir. And what that'll do is I'm going to apply vacuum. I'm going to apply air pressure to this. It's going to create a vacuum. It's going to draw the whole system down into a vacuum. Once the system is drawn down into vacuum, I'm going to close this valve, disconnect this, I have a, uh, I use a clear jug just so I can monitor how much coolant is in it. I will stick this hose down in this jug right here. And then we'll disconnect this, we'll stick this in, we'll open the valve up, and the vacuum that's in the engine in the entire coolant system will draw coolant into it. And it'll leave, they say no air pockets, but I mean, absolutely minimal if there are any. It works, it's real slick, and the best part about this is, there's a vacuum gauge on here, and if, uh, you know, throughout taking everything apart, if, if there's still a leak in the coolant system, well, you're going to know it because you won't be able to draw a vacuum, and you won't be able to hold vacuum. So I'm going to move you so that you can see this gauge here, and I'm going to hook my uh, airline up to it. And if I did everything right, we should be able to draw about, uh, well, we should be able to get to about 26, 25, 26 on the, on the needle here. And... Um, when we take, when we remove the vacuum source, it should stay there for, you know, maybe five or ten minutes and we know we're good. Okay, all I'm going to do is take the shop hose and hook onto this thing right here, and as soon as I... Now let's do this. Okay, we actually, we're on, I know it's kind of hard for you to read here, we're about 26, 27. Uh, that's great, I mean, that, that, that's really good, and it's holding, it's not dropping back real fast. Now, it won't hold, you know, overnight, it's not going to hold vacuum, there's, you know, air is smaller than water, um, where air can maybe escape through, uh, coolant necessarily can't, but this is good, it's not moving, and we're, uh, we're well above 25, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Move the camera so you can see me hook the other hose up and suck the coolant in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove this hose right here. We don't need that. We're going to hook up our fill hose right here. You'll notice I have a funnel in here. It's kind of wedging this uh, tube so that I'm keeping my pickup at the very bottom. And I'm going to open the valve, and it's, you'll see this level of this coolant drop right down. I usually stop once it gets about halfway, and I fill it back up, and kind of tap on it, let the air bubbles work their way back up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open the valve now. And now as this coolant level is diminishing in this uh, clear container, our pressure gauge, we're losing vacuum, we're coming up. So 
We're getting down. We're getting uh, about an inch from the thing. I'm going to stop it right there. And I'm going to top off. This is why I use a clear, uh, clear jug. We're going to top that off. Just tap on it. We'll get some of the air bubbles to work their way up, and then we're going to open this valve back up again. And I'll do that as many times as it takes until we uh, run out of vacuum. And when we run out of vacuum, our coolant is going to be full right to the cap. We're about uh, five inches of vacuum right now, and it's dropping. And just like that, we're done. It's full. So what I do to minimize mess is I just put this down like that and crack this open. Any leftover coolant will run back into my jug. Now we just unscrew this to relieve the pressure. Pull it out of there. And let's see where we're at here. Yep, our coolant level's right to the bottom. I'm going to add maybe just a cup in there, and then I'll top off our reservoir, and we're we're golden. Yeah, didn't take very much at all. Oh, I better put my lid on here. I'm gonna end up with coolant everywhere. And that's how you use the airlift. Um, I believe that there's different uh, manufacturers that made this, probably the same tool, different name on it, probably does the same thing. I've heard of a couple of them. I haven't seen them, but if you, uh, if you work on cars, I think this was like, I don't know, I, I want to say it was like maybe 120 bucks. That was off a tool truck, but again, that was, you know, almost 20 years ago. Well worth the investment, um, especially on the new cars. So that's how you put a water pump on a... 3500 GM V6. I mean, this would apply probably to like uh, maybe some Pontiac G6s. Uh, any, pretty much anything on the GM platform that's got this style engine. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, check out my other content. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.